flights. Uh, it says Nadajar Way, but it's a subcontinent or a sub sub area of Nadajar Way. We'll, we'll, we'll fix the over over uh, overlay later on. Session two. Uh, a little summary, real quick, Dar. So in the last session, you guys um, got familiar with the crew, got to know the captain, first mate, the helmsman, a little bit of that. You got to introduce yourselves to each other and uh, talk to the captain about uh, taking on uh, a mission over in Fawaj. And uh, then you weathered a storm. So that yes, we did. A nice, nice little introduction to nautical life, I think. We also determined some patterns or lack thereof of people sleeping arrangements. Yeah, that was important to Amanda. Good. Hey, character knowledge. It's very important. <laughs> it's valid. Knowledge is power. And it actually is very important to Mariel because the lack of privacy on the ship is very important to her uh, nighttime activities. Um, that being finding somebody in a secluded location and feeding upon them. It's a valid point. I mean, point. it's not that simple. It's not like table for one. Get over here. That's <laughs> a little bit more finesse to it than that. But yeah, um, there's there's probably a small grouping of people that uh, she she would go back to that you know determining whether or not they keep their mouth shut. Mm -hmm. and privacy for that. So just kind of using those those same people to would, go ahead and uh, make a just make not... a risk check. I like the, I think Knox uh, would allow you to feed on him. Mariel? She she probably would have him in a rotation of people. Because she's not trying to think, make it obvious. As a friend, I think I would just do that. I'd be like, yeah, go ahead. It's not, it's not a bad experience, either. Oh, they don't even edit that yet at all? That's great. Um, What was I rolling, Dar? Just a charisma check. Charisma. Duh. Sorry, my dice are a little hard to read. Um, that will be enough. Uh, 27. 27? Cool. Yeah. So what I said. Like, I'm trying to figure out if I need to seduce the captain. I'm trying to get off the floor. So yeah, uh, Mariel has found a small following within the, within the crew that are entranced by the idea of being fed on and, uh, and that sort of intimate experience and, um, yeah, she's got a small group that uh, allows her to feed off of them in, in quiet, tucked away places. So it probably looks like they're just getting freaky with each other. Fair enough. Wait, it, to, how, to, to the regular crew, yeah. Yeah. How does how does Mariel uh, go about it visually if, if she's if somebody happens to stumble over the, the her feeding? I mean, like they're just in a dark corner. It looks like they're necking off somewhere. She's yeah. actually necking. Yeah, that's quite, true. quite literally, in the literal sense of the word. So yeah, then then that's exactly what it looks like. Is it looks like she's engaging engaging in, you know, foreplay as we call it. Yeah, and and, uh, and there's a large number, not a large number, but you know, a good handful, a, a, a rotating number of crew that she does this with. And, so yeah. there's there's there is no there are no secrets on ships like these. So you've got to be very very fucking careful every time and every one of those people has to be sworn to secrecy. I'm just throwing that out there. It's it's going to be tough it's to keep that kind of secret, yeah. It's no, not no, like the, it's the idea isn't that it's not going to get out. It's it's just with enough mystery to where it's not they're not going to come at her with torches and pitchforks. Right. Okay. It's more of it's more of a a fun and almost almost, fantasy-esque you know uh, like they have a good time so nobody's really mad about it okay well i'll try i'll try and normalize it you know i'm like i'm her friend i've known her for years <laughs> that's not even true uh, I know. People do this all the time. it's all fake news it's you're you're it's it's all good it's totally normal well, and she's well, kind of hoping there are some people on there. She's kind of hoping there are people on the ship who are just like, knock it off, like whatever. She bit you, you know, while you were necking or whatever. Like, sure, okay. So, I'm, I'm I mean, just, however that however that plays out. Yeah, I'm just saying that's going to be a lot of deception checks from a lot of people who might not so, be so good at it. I don't, so, I just don't know. No, this is fine. I think, I think we can we can sum it up like this. So, um, people mm -hmm. know that Mariel's not normal. It's obvious that she's not human. She's already some. Uh, some ancestry that they're not familiar with and for all they know you know she appears outwardly to be an elf uh for all mm -hmm. they know that's what elves do okay uh, 
I was gonna say, it's perhaps. Yeah, I was gonna say perhaps he's just making out with a bunch of people and they don't even notice that they're drawing blood. And you uh, are you are in a very promiscuous and sexually free and open society as it is. If, if you're drinking, if you're drinking blood, if people come to realize that, they might just you know, it's it's not necessarily unheard of. People have weird tastes. Don't kink shame her. Exactly. And okay. That's, okay. People on the crew don't tend to kink shame here. There's people yeah. here, you know, uh, especially when the the whiskey gets flowing and the. Uh, do they taste different to her if they've been drinking? Absolutely, they taste different. Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm so she would very specifically stay away from people who have very bad hygiene habits and who eat a whole bunch of crap that's disgusting. So I'm the she's a, she's a picky eater. They don't have much choice on that because sh ship, sh it's, uh, they, it's a ship <laughs> life what you're given. Sure. Uh, to a point. That's funny. In the best of times, you know, or, you know, in the worst of times, they get hard tack and, and jerky and a little bit of uh, lemon water. In the uh, the times are better than you know they'll have fresh fruits and vegetables, and meats. Usually at the beginning of a voyage or whenever you make birth, you stock up on maybe a week's worth of, of fresh produce and foods, you know, before retiring back to hard tack. And... Got it. It's probably also suspicious she doesn't actually eat food. So, yeah. like little, little, like a snack or a taste of something here or there, but yeah, beyond drinking, right? Because she can, she can drink if she wants to. She can eat if she wants to. It just doesn't do anything for her. Yeah, she. And she, she has to. Like she, she doesn't have either. digestive processes, so she has to throw it up afterwards. Oh, then she. Yeah, she. No. That's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's a that's a good point. Yeah. I'm just, I'm editing the overlay just while we're on stream because I don't give a fuck at this point, so. It's entertaining. I'm watching my They're face just part of the creative screen. process. I'm like, ooh, he's stretching me out. <laughs> well. Oh. In the aftermath. You heard me. In the aftermath of the storm, the crew is all about, you guys are, are sleeping for a while and the crew is, is uh, repairing the damage that occurred during the storm. Um. Give me your, uh, since you're all sleeping, give me your passive perceptions. Uh, so that is just your perception plus 10, right? Yes, your perception modifier plus 10. So mine, 11. So mine is 10. Oh. Well, hold on. 16 for Muriel. How, how can your percept really? Yeah, so so I have a plus zero to wisdom and, I have, and I'm not uh, proficient in it. So uh, it's what a ro That's a rogue typical, right? Yeah. So it's ten. What do you expect? So, uh, um, fourteen for Agatha. Okay. Knox. Twelve. How much time has passed at this point, Dar? It's been about, uh, let's say, four hours, three, four hours. Okay, so Mariel's actually just awake. Okay. Um, then it's, it, it makes even more sense. You made the check regardless, but uh, Muriel hears uh, on, on board the deck, uh, sails on the horizon. Oh, is what's the normal like mode of operation when that gets called out? Do people like, um, wake up? It, it depends. So nothing needs to be done. Sometimes people run, run a top deck because they want to see what it is. Is it going to be a... a is it going to be a warship? Is it going to be, you know, a, a fisherman's ship? Is it going to be a merchant ship worth taking? That sort of thing. Okay. She'll go up and look and see if she needs to warn anybody. If, yeah, just go up and see what's going on. Okay. You get above board, and, and there's not too much excitement. Uh, you know, people are still going about their tasks, but some of, some of the other people below deck uh, heard what was going on, and they run up to, to take a look. And um, on the horizon, you see... Uh, you see small sails, or you see you see a pair of sails. Uh, so it looks like it's a, a two-masted ship. Too far away to make out any details. Um, but the captain has already exchanged some words with Squint, or actually not Squint. He's gone below to sleep, but uh, one of the assistants, and um, they start to make they start to make a, a casual 
turn about so that, uh, that the ship can move in that direction. So it seems like he's captured the captain's curious enough to see whether it's worth going after. Just observe. They keep, uh, they keep uh, moving on towards it. You know, distances on the ocean are very deceiving. You can see the sails, but it could still be, you know, three, four, five hours away before you even get anything. And if you guys are chasing somebody down, then it's even longer to close in on, even if, if closing in is even possible. Mm -hmm. But it becomes quickly apparent over the next couple hours that this ship is not really going anywhere. It's, um, it's moving with the current, but it's certainly the sails aren't picking up the wind. When you get closer, you can see why. Is one of the uh, one of the, the the main mast is cracked and it's leaning in an odd direction, and it looks like um, instead of striking it, the crew is is desperately trying to repair it, which is odd. Um, you know, on uh, even though you're not really a sailor yet, you you've known from your time on board, you guys carry spare. You guys pirates carry very little uh, compared to like a, what a warship would carry but most ships carry a sp at least a spare mast in their holes uh, along with you know spare ropes and sail and, and sails and all that and rigging uh, but, yeah. yeah but this does it look like it came from the general direction of the storm that we were in it does look like uh, yeah it does look like they probably were in the same storm that you guys were in An easy prize, Captain. That's what I was going to say. Is this, is this a target here? Or? Um, it's been another couple hours, so it's probably been about six hours total. It's it's enough that some of you could be awake if you're light sleepers. I'll let you determine it how you want. I'm probably a pretty heavy sleeper. Hmm. Unless sure. there's a lot. I'll of... be up and going. Hey, Captain. We got ourselves a tempting target, eh? Our... Well... Target, at least. We'll see what kind of ship it be. Parrot be hungry for some blood. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Why don't you, uh... Why don't you take over the helm? Okay. Clough ain't... Clough ain't had a chance to sleep a wink. Hey, Clough, get your lazy bones to sleep. Scurry Clough. dog. And just sort of lurches towards uh, below hold, below the deck. Okay. Nice and easy there. Take us close, but uh, not too close. You know, sail casually. <laughs> Go ahead and uh, and make a nav make a navigation check. Wisdom plus ship's helm. He's, he's gonna run us into the ship. He's gonna just run us right <laughs> to that thing. One. So it's uh, tools plus wisdom, you said? Yeah. All right. I lucked out and rolled above a 10, so that's good. 15. All right. So you do just that. Um, you know, the captain of the uh, Scarlet actually is giving orders as far as, you know, shifting about the sails, but you uh, are able to take it around in a little broad, in a broad arc that doesn't look like you're changing course. You know, you just sort of, you guys sort of tack casually and, and uh, make it look like that's the actual route you had always intended to take. So they can't tell that you're changing course towards them. Mm -hmm. uh, not like they could probably escape you anyways, but nonetheless, soon enough, um, you guys get close enough to see that it's not a merchant ship. It's a larger ship. It's a, it's a largest ship. It's a, uh, a two-masted gaff-rigged ship um, bristling with uh, nets and lines so it's pretty obvious that it's a, a fishing trawler and it seems to have suffered damage from the storm the ship is listing to one side to the starboard side and uh, and the mizzen mast is cracked not the main mast um, the crew that you can see are on the process of, of trying to either uh, either repair or replace the mast um, and um, you get close enough and, and you can see 
um, as the ships start to close within half a mile of each other, uh, you can see that there's there's no sign of of, uh, um, of soldiers or, or guards or anyone aboard. It's not a warship. It's not even a merchant ship. It's just a, a coast-hugging fishing trawler. Ain't much it's a good place to find good place to find more crew. More information. Yeah, yeah Shalaz. Uh, what are the captain's orders? Yeah, uh, Shalaz turns towards um, uh, Mariel. She's been up on board the most. Why don't you rouse some of the uh, some of the boarding crew? Get them prepared. You never know. Right away. And Make I sure will... to wake up and squint. All right, how, uh, watch this, guys. You ready? Are you guys ready? Finally. Yeah. No. Once that loads in, I've been setting this up for the last 20 minutes. <laughs> this. All right, here we go. Look I'll go that. wake up. That normally go with us. Okay, so Muriel makes her way aboard. Uh, you know, kicks Mez awake. and. Oh, nice. No, she doesn't kick anybody. <laughs> I told you I wasn't ready, man. Jeez. Or like their feet. She'll kick their feet. She's no, not Hagatha, to anybody. Sorry. No, sorry. No. Oh, oh Hagatha. Uh, she might kick Hagatha. Whoa. Like at her ankle, just not so you her know, feet, but uh, just enough. Hagatha and Shimper are reversed. Yeah. Oh man, thank you. Mm. I, I will. Uh, I'll, I'll, I I'll wake that. up turn to you and say, "No, I'm not attracted to you. I don't want to scissor with you. Leave me alone. I'm going to go back to sleep." Captain's orders: get out of bed. Oh, okay. So soon Can enough. Get up for her morning <laughs> meal. Your crew when he gets up before, because I'm... I'm in the water. Glug, okay. glug, 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 glug. And even though Nox is a, 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 a cook, he's also, because of his skills at uh, magic, he's also one of Oh, absolutely. I was just going to say, I heard him make that comment to Marielle, so his breakfast tastes a little weird this morning. Her <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> Man. That's all, man. <laughs> So, um, yeah, the boarders are all woken up. There's about 20 of you. Um, you know, I mean, all the pirates will fight in time, but there's there's about 20 of you that are usually first over the rails. Mm -hmm. So who negotiates their surrender? Hmm? Who negotiates their surrender? Is, like, the, is, is Reyna with us? Scarlet with us? Yeah, so Scarlet is also part of the boarding crew. Uh, she's always one of the first okay. over the rails as well. Um, and you guys have standing orders that if, if somebody throws down weapons, you leave them alone. Okay. It's, it's a, it's okay. a standard thing. There's that. no, like, do you surrender? It's literally you keep killing them until they throw down weapons. And once crew oh, starts... Oh, but we don't, we don't, like, say, hey, we're going to take what we want, throw it on your arms, or we'll just kill you. We just go, rah. Uh, it depends. In this situation, it might be different. Normally, it, it's obvious what you guys are doing, and so there's a fight. But they don't have guards, and so this situation might be a little different. Okay. So when Squint replaced me, I joined the boarding the boarding team as the boarding helmsman. Uh, Squint doesn't replace you, but somebody else does. But yeah, uh, you get replaced by another one of the helm, uh, one of the crew, and uh, the you guys get prepared. Um, normally, when you guys board, you have to get in a small pinnace. Uh, part of part of a uh, part of your operations is there's a. Uh, you guys, there's an un, there's a disassembled pinnace that's in the holds, and you guys literally assemble it and drop it in the water alongside the ship, and you use it as a boarding, uh, as a boarding boat. But, Can we just go up next to it and just like jump well, over because this because this ship is is not really moving and isn't capable of fleeing, um, then you're probably just grapples is going to be enough to to come up alongside it, and indeed that's exactly what happens. Uh, ship is you know makes some attempt at trying to escape but with a broken mast. even 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 with them taking down the mizzen mast they only have a single mast and the ship is already listing and there's just no way they can get away and after just a few minutes they uh they even stop that small attempt and uh you guys all you know all all you know half of you have uh grapples and you you throw the grapples on board and and you know, secure them and, and help pull the ships alongside each other and uh, lower gangplanks and 
uh, begin moving over, and, and the other crew uh, of the uh, of the ship, you get, you look at them, and you know they're fishermen. You know they 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 have some belaying pins or knives or whatnot, but there's no weapons of war. The ship uh, the ship have uh, cannons, but it doesn't look like they're in any condition to fire since the ship is listing. They're not pointed in the proper area, so they can't actually fire on you guys. So it's it's. Uh, it's so, kind of sad, actually. So, <laughs> so they're, they're just fishermen. <laughs> well, they're not just fishermen if they have cannons on their ship. There's something more to this. But, you know, we'll keep an eye out. Um, A pirate's life for me, I scream Can, I, can I be playing boarding music? Like rousing, you I mean, know, blood, blood up thirsty. Up where you have to board. Yeah, sure. <laughs> she said, we, we get close and she's, she goes, X gonna give it to you. You gonna get And then, like, we start to... <laughs> Um, what, pump, pump everybody up. How, how energy to get that first? So, so Dar, I want to make sure I understand the situation properly. You know, our plan is to aggressively board this thing. Our plan is to fight as necessary. If they fight back, uh, we're getting close. You know, I can shoot with accuracy from a certain distance. Uh, I mean, are they are they at the rails with their blank pins ready? Like, is that is it? What's going down here? Um, at first they were, but as they get close and they see that that it's it's kind of like. They were at the ready, and then you get closer, and the nerves start to shake, and people start to step back. So, so um, who, who's the most? Who's the, who has the highest authority on this pinnace right now? Scarlet. Scarlet's with well, us. You're not. You're, you're not on the pinnace. Uh, normally, you guys have a pinnace, but this time it's not being used. Oh, we would do gangplanks from ship to ship. Got it. Okay. Okay. Right. Um, so then it's Arena is the one at the rails with you. So then I'll have my pistol out and up, and I'll and I'll say. Anytime, Scarlet, let me know. I can pick one to show him who's boss. I like your fire for now. We'll see what they do. Okay. So I'm I'm ready with my pistol. And not a literal ready action, because we're out of combat, but I'm ready with it, so. Yeah. Um Which one of you landlubbers is next? <laughs> no one here is a landlubber. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, except for maybe you, Nox. We're all on boats. Oh. <laughs> okay, so we're, we're ready and we're waiting for her guidance, I guess, yeah? For her command. So, yeah. so, the, do, do, so do, do we, like, actually, like, you know, turn our sails into the wind a little bit so we stop our forward momentum and stop next to them? Correct, yes. Okay, so then we're, like, uh, uh, gun wall to gun wall and just, we just, do we just jump over? Yeah, so you guys are, so you guys are not, uh, the, the ship's, that your ship slows down um and, and you guys get close and and then it, it sent, you guys are not motionless both of you are being drifted by the currents but with the grappling hooks grabbing at the ship and pulling them close um you know that's it's uh uh capable you guys are possible uh, to, j to just cross over on the uh, okay on the okay. Um, okay and at, at the rail uh you know they, they they have uh they've they've clustered together at the rails um you know but as the pirates uh jump up on the plank especially um you know with like looking over at hagatha and, and seeing uh, a gabarees and seeing pirates with with pistols bared and and whatnot none of them despite the fact that they came from from the mainland none of them have pistols okay and even uh, doesn't sound like they even have martial weapons. They just have simple weapons. Yeah, they, they yeah they, they have simple weapons, and soon enough, like they they move back, and and, uh, and Reyna, you know, leaps forward and on board, and the rest of you go ahead and make some acrobatics checks, dexterity acrobatics. Yeah, let's go. Natural twenty. <laughs> She's on it right now. Not so good. Uh, I just want to leap across and on like. Whoever looks the most scared, I just want to wink at them and laugh. I think that's it. Okay. Uh, that is a 23 for Mezalet. Did you want to make that intimidating, Mariel, and make an intimidation check? No, she's just having fun. Okay. I mean, if, it, if it's intimidating to them, sure, but... Right, so you're just... not trying to intimidate. She's just enjoying herself. She's just having what fun. What did you say? Acrobatics? Acrobatics. Yeah. <laughs> you look so scared. By the way, I assume that... Nine. Nine. Got it. <laughs> It falls in the water. No, it's 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 not too difficult. There's going to be checks made because you're over the water, but you're 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 yeah. the ship's yeah, I, got, I, I I got a ten. Okay. Yeah. So you guys are all you guys all make it across. 
What did Shimmer get? I got a fucking high on that. It was just DC five. Shimmer got a four. Oh. That's why. I, that's why you went a little bit too early there, Dar. Oh shit! Well, the DC was a five. <laughs> I rolled two twos. What is up oh, with you? Did. That's also a one in four hundred chance, right? That's crazy. Wow. Do you have another set of dice? Is that the yeah. same set of dice you rolling crap last time? No, it's. The, I mean, I've rolled high with you. So so far, we've started this campaign, and he has rolled two ones and two twos on advantage. I just want to make sure we record that. So the next one will be two sets of All threes. Automatic checks. <laughs> So uh, yeah, um, Shimber is 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 running over, and maybe he's just a little too excited. Uh, he's he's a very excitable fellow, it seems, and uh, he slips. Uh, <laughs> I'm going swimming on a wet last gangplank, and he falls overboard right into the ocean. Uh, I yell, "I'm oh, going no. swimming!" It's calm waters right now, right, Dar? What's that? It's calm waters right now. Yeah, the waters yeah. are calm. Okay. And you guys, How everybody in the crew the knows. Everybody in the crew knows that Shimber. Can swim and survive underwater. So while people are like, surprised, nobody's. I don't want to kill you. I, I, assume, I assume. I assume. I assume our crew laughs. Like a good number right. of people just laugh, right? But... Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I'll say as he does that. I will say as as we get over to the ship, the one she winked at. I'll say it looks like we might have uh, room for one in our crew here once we're done with this. <laughs> I'll I, I bet swim Shimmer over and climb up once I can. Oh, I did want to... Sorry, Jeff, what were you saying? I guess Shimmer's going to get a new nickname. Swimmer? Uh, the... Uh, the uh, I do. I, I wanted to also ask this. I believe uh, the only person... Well, the two barbarians. Does anybody have anything heavier than leather armor? I, have I don't wear armor. Okay. I don't wear armor either. I have a chain shirt. They're naked. So I have studded leather, and so Mariel is probably the most heavily armored person on the ship. With a chain oh. shirt. Just... <laughs> Bitches. Now, you can Sorry. swim in a chain shirt, I mean, for real. Um, you can technically swim in full plate, as uh, contrary to what a lot of people believe. But, um, but yeah, so, but Dar, right? I mean, a lot, of, a lot of these, when you're out on the ocean, you do not wear much armor generally, right? So... Yes and no. Uh, sailors tend not to, but you will find... Navy that, does uh, sometimes, yeah. But... That, Military and all yeah. warships will be definitely be heavily armed. They don't care. Yeah, because all they're doing is they're they're not. That, sorry to I don't want to sidetrack too much, but on a ship like that, you have you have the crew, and then you have the the marines who are going to jump. And those guys might be heavier armor because they don't plan on ever going in the water. They just go over to the ship to kill people, right? Exactly. So yeah. yeah. And they they feel that that they're more likely to die from a bullet or a arrow to the chest than well, there you go. Drowning. I'm drowning. There you go. But on this ship, Mario probably is one of the most armored people, just so you know. Okay. I climb up when I'm ready. Yeah. Or when I'm able. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he <laughs> takes a tumble. Um, soon enough, they uh, it's it's obvious who the, the captain is of the other vessel. You know, the, the crew point him out. And Scarlet moves towards him. She's got a, a pistol in one hand and a cutlass in the other. And she, you know, she points the cutlass at him. Well there, well, Captain, it's, let's go see what you have, huh? And he sort of shakes his head. You, you can see that we're just, we're just fishermen, humble folk. We don't have much on this ship. You might not even have bothered. And Scarlet looks towards uh, Mez. Go on, take a few, take a few below decks and see what see what he's what we've got to work with. Yes, of course. Well, we'll keep a keen eye out, uh, Captain. Why don't you show us to the ship's purse? I know you have something, but uh, we're just fishermen. I do. I don't carry salary. I don't, I, why would I have a ship's purse? And even if I did, why wouldn't I have just thrown it overboard? And she sighs glances over to Mariel. Why don't you see if you can get the location from our good captain here? And then she, uh, like, she moved <laughs> off. Uh, so she, I'm, I'm assuming she wants me to try to, like, charm him? She, some, she, some she some left a very nebulous. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, I'll let okay, you think so about Mar what you're gonna do while Meg... Okay. Yeah, I'll say, I'll say hag... Hagatha. Ooh, that was quite the swim. 
I'll say, and now, and now you get to go. Well, no, he's just too bloodthirsty. Shimber is just up there doing his thing. I'll say, I'll, I'll just say, I'll just say, Hag, and I'll and I'll go. I'll take her and I'll take her and just like two other random, you know, crew members that you've pointed out are or whatever. Actually, fuck it, that doesn't make sense. I'll take Hagatha alone. We'll just go down there. Yeah. I know. I I my character thinks. Well, I won't tell you what my character's thinking. I'm trying to work better at this. Okay, so I'll say I'll say Hag with me. Okay, so Hag and, and Mez head below decks. Does anyone go with them? Like, just because he only called one person. Yeah, that doesn't mean none. Yeah, exactly. That leaves Nox and Shimmer to do whatever the fuck they want. But keep in mind that there still have to be some number of people up on deck threatening, you know, physically threatening the crew, too. So whatever. I think he said, like, 20 crew came over, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's 20 of you. We have extra. Oh, yeah, you can be afforded. So basically he's asking you, Nox and Shimmer, are you, what are you doing? I will stay with Mario. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, I think there's some good booty underneath the boat. <laughs> you gonna go with us? How uh, how big is this ship, Dark? Just general length. The ship is actually about the same size as. Ooh. Well, that makes this as, easy because watch this. Uh, Below decks, bitch. Oh yeah, you guys will find that out in 28 seconds or whatever Twitch's stupid delay is. It's really anticlimactic. <laughs> whenever you announce it. I got I got I got to like do it with like a real. I have to delay it. Click on it and then like 20 seconds yeah. later say it's it. It's like yeah. when you were a kid and, like, and you were oh. talking about the lights changing. You try to guess when the light was gonna change. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why do you say when you're a kid? <laughs> uh, I do that at every I light. I stopped doing it when I, I was like 12. I do that at uh, every light. Okay. Well. Um. Ooh, cool. So, Mario will... Are we at that part? Sorry. So, no, so uh, you guys go below decks, and it's it's very obvious that this is a different type of ship. I mean, they may be the same size, but you go below decks, and there's a, you know, there's a area for the captain cabin. Um, the cargo is separated by the, the, the interior bulwarks, which have been entirely ripped out on your ship. Um, yeah, I was going to say, this probably, it probably doesn't look exactly like this interior at all, but there it is, you know, so, yeah. It's the um, right size, at least. Yeah. And so there's there's much less cargo sp space, and what little is there is seems to be taken up by um, uh, the uh, uh, a large number of the hall. You know, there's um, there's casks of salted fish, um, various uh, sea life that's been caught up. It's a it's a trawler, which means they generally just throw nets overboard and drag them and then it right before night you yeah know, before night comes they pull them up and then they gut the fish and salt them and pack them all, all, all on all on board and then put them down here and so there's there's casks of that um there's there's some spare ship supplies casks of oakum spare rope sail what what is curious which i pointed out before is there's no spare mast on the ship Are there any crew down here with us? Did they leave um, any crew below decks. There, so there are there are a few people below deck that, that somehow made their way down there. Uh, yeah. What's oh man? I guess I guess I have to ask you, Dar, just because you know what is this specific pirate crew's modus operandi when it comes to this sort of thing? Because sometimes if you remain below deck when you were when you were expected above to kill you, or they might knock you out, or they might just send you up deck, right? Top deck. So, it, and, uh, you know, uh, you guys Get don't really have it to think. You, you know, uh, on, on pirate crews, it's like... Don't... Shalaz is not overly bloodthirsty, but he is ruthless, okay. um, you know. Uh, so... So Shimber said, get, get yourself above deck, right? Get you out there, sea dogs. Okay, I see you so down there, here, there's yeah. the answer for now, then. So there you go. Uh, and if they don't... The... Make an intimidation check. Can, okay. can Hagatha's mere existence there assist? If Agatha's attempting to be... Yeah, yeah. Well, because I was going to say, he'll say, get yourself up deck, or I'll say, oh, I'll let my friends have their way with you, is what I was going to say. Uh, Why am I doing this? I don't have this accent. You guys are fucking me up. <clears throat> or I'll let my friends have their way with you. Muster up stairs. So I... That's good. No, that's good. I like that. I rolled a six, so I have an 11. Uh, so advantage. Okay. Advantage from assistance advantage. is what it is. Advantage? Okay, I'll roll again. Yep. Okay, this time it's a 20. There we go. There you go. Uh, that that seems to do it, and they scramble and uh, and and run away from the from the intimidating goblin and and uh, giant very large <laughs> giant friend. <laughs> I, I trip I, one I, as it makes its way to the top deck. Trip. 
I was you're gonna. Just, uh, you're above board, Knox. Remember? No, you said when, when they, they, they make their way up. Board, yeah. Pass me, I'll trip them clump, 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 clump. <laughs> they fall back down the stairs, break their neck. The rest of the crew, the rest of the crew gets angry. It's a fight. Yeah, exactly. Um. So there's not too much of interest other than basic supplies, which may be of interest to the captain. Uh, but there is the captain's quarters, which the door there is locked. Not for long. <laughs> Open me up this door. I'll, uh... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Well, this... listen, in case we end up taking the ship, there's no need to break it unless necessary. Give me just a second, Hag. Yeah. Come on. You know, Matt is always playing with her fancy tools. Yeah, so uh, if you do let me go at the door before you break it, do I you? do, I do. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll heave my axe up and then you say, hold on a second. Okay. Manage to do your thing. So that's, uh, uh, Amanda, this is trickery? Or. Sorry, trickery. what? No, trickery no, no, is trickery is 2E. <laughs> yeah, this is a tool use. Sorry, I was getting 2E totally mixed up. It should be your tech, your dex plus your proficiency model. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's, and well, and I have expertise with deep tools, so let's, let's have some fun. So that is a 29. <laughs> You rolled like All an 18 right. or something. I rolled a 19, uh, yep. It's a good lock, and it's a stout door, and, and it's a, you know, but no match for Mez's skill with her uh, her picks. His. His. Yeah, sorry, his. Hagatha's is the female. We'll figure, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Um, mm. so the door slides open. Meanwhile, um, while while Mez is fiddling with the door, Mariel and Knox are above board, and they've got the captain pulled off to the rails on the side. So, Mario will just look at him from a couple feet away, and um, she's actually going to cast message, so he hears the next words in her in his head, mm -hmm. and it, essentially she just says, very calmly, kind of devoid of emotion, um, "You can give us what we want, or we'll kill everyone. I will drink you until you die, and we will set your ship on fire." All right, make that intimidation check. I'll be I'll be behind her, kind of dancing with fire in my hands. And and, and, and the guy has no idea what she even means. I will drink you till you die, either. So that's extra right, creepy. Right. He just has this gold-eyed stranger staring at him intently. Um. So that's a seventeen for intimidation. Okay. Heretics and sorcerers. Fine. The the, it's. Buried in a cask of fish. I can lead you to it. Scarlet! It seems like the captain's willing to cooperate now. Good. Well, go go retrieve the ship's purse, and we'll finish tying up the crew here. She'll just kind of gesture for him to lead on. Nox, if you come with. Oh, yes. Lead the way. And he seems as... as frightened of Knox as he is of Miriam. I'll look at him. Pleasure doing business. And you notice when he was saying heretics and sorcerers, he was actually staring at Knox and not Mario. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, you... Them. Ladies first. You, uh, oh. you lead the the shaking white-faced uh, captain. captain down below deck. And you begin to... You know, he... he you know, push him towards whatever cast that he hid the, uh, the so, person. So, yeah, for perspective, they're now on the same level as us. Correct. Okay, gotcha. Uh, meanwhile, you guys have gotten into the ship's cabin. Um, it's it's a fairly humble uh, cabin as those things go. Um, just enough room for uh, a table, uh, a uh, chest, a bed, uh, and a you know, the, the table seems to double as a desk. There's no I, mahogany bookshelf or anything like that. No mahogany no, bookshelf. No, no, no leather-bound books. I do say, uh, as we go in, as I pop the lock, just I'll say, don't worry, Hag. You can always break the door on the way out. And then I'll, and then I'll let us <laughs> in, so. Go ahead and make a... Uh, make a... Or what's your passive perceptions? Well, I was... Uh, and I can tell you minus ten, but I, you know, I was gonna say I'm, I'm gonna make an active investigation to look for, you know, useful stuff. But that's after this, I guess, right? So that's a ten for me. Twelve, uh, eleven, excuse me. 
Come on, Hagatha with a 14. Hagatha, Hagatha with a 14. Sorry, I didn't hear that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, with the 14, uh, Hagatha notices right away. Uh, you guys kind of all see this uh, this mounted uh, horn um, above the bed, but Hagatha notices how intricately carved it is. It's, and it, it's, it's a narwhal horn. Oh. Which is uh, particularly prized, Oesh. Yeah, I was going to say, those are valuable, yeah. And it's it's very well carved um, with uh, little runes and and uh, nautical uh, etchings, and um, probably worth a pair a, a pretty penny. Um, okay. You're not quite sure how much, but you know it's it's definitely got value above what it would first appear. Um, meanwhile, go ahead. Those of you searching, go ahead and make active investigation checks. I'm gonna be guard duty. Okay. Look outside the door. Or, I mean, no whammies, no whammies, no whammies. I, I have not rolled poorly today. Uh, oh, that, great. That's a... Uh, it's a 17. Sorry. Okay. What about you, Hagatha? Uh, three. <laughs> <laughs> I found a wall. Just kinda, Hagatha's taking a shine to the horn and is just sort of, you know, not just, really, just half-heartedly rummaging through the cabin. Uh, keeps glancing back at the horn and probably has taken it down by now. Yeah, I'm gonna take it down. Um, meanwhile, Mez is a little bit more diligently um, searching the cabin, and he soon piles together anything of value. There's a, a sheep of maps, navigational tools, uh, a compass, spyglass. Um... Spyglass? <laughs> <laughs> they are not worth as much in this. Uh... They're not they worth as much in here. No. No, not in this setting. In the setting. Oh, yeah. The setting. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, a couple smoking pipes, you know, little wooden smoking pipes, a small cask of uh, tobacco. Um, so Mez is, Mez is meticulous, and he's also he also knows the consequences of, of pocketing things. So I'm not writing any of this down because essentially this is all going right. to be – I'm going to report all of this. So, yeah. Exactly. Party. Everything, right. gets, everything gets pulled out and uh, – it's not party treasure, it's NPC treasure. Yeah, it's NPC. chip yeah. treasure, I Although guess. Although it'll eventually, once it's sold and works its way back down to you, will uh, end up with as PC treasure. And Mezzalette does have uh, the ability to get uh, much more off a resale than your average person, so he probably conducts a lot of the resale uh, uh, imports, uh, or at least helps with it, right? But yeah, so. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Nox and Mariel have the captain, ship's captain. And he's taken, you know, sorted your way through. He seems to be counting barrels. Um, going a little bit slower than you would like. But come on, on with it. <laughs> <laughs> I like Knox's no nonsense uh, attitude. Let's, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, he's become a little think, more forceful. I think this is the one. You know, they all start to look the same. Well, we could bust them all open if you'd like, with your head. Ooh. Oh, maybe it's this one instead. And he like moves over. <laughs> I Talks it. if you would be so kind. Yeah, I'll, I'll check it. I'll go through the fish. Okay, so Knox dives his hands in through the fish, and you know it's it's like a, a layer of of uh, of fish, a layer of salt, a layer of fish. It does look like it's recently been disturbed, and you lever down a few layers. You can't. You don't have to get too far down because obviously he didn't have too much time to hide the purse, but. Um, you pull out a, a, uh, weatherproof, uh, ship's purse. You know, it's actually not, uh, not a purse so much as a, as a small iron casket. It actually probably isn't too smelly either. If the, f the fish is relatively fresh and it's all salted in there. So there you go. Yeah. And so you pull that and bring that aboard. It's, it's locked, of course. Okay. Um, seeing that it's locked, Muriel asks, looks at the captain, um, and the keys for this. It seems such a pity to break it open. He grumbles and slides his hands down his pants and sort of winces a little bit as he moves, shifts his hand around and pulls out a, a, uh, a small iron key. Did he, did he have the key keister? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> That is an efficient <laughs> hiding place. Knox, go ahead and get the key and open it up. You, if, 
Nox, if you would Absolutely not. I will get nowhere near. <laughs> you have Fade Town! No, you have Press Digitation. This is May where Jan. you use Press Digitation. Okay, there we go. May Jan. Oh, okay, May Jan? Okay. That works too. <laughs> so they both just look disgusted and he just tele telekinetically just. Oh. At, at this point, does it seem like there's anything left the captain has to tell us? What's, it, what's in the casket? What's in We're the casket? It. It's, not it's not for us to open. We're just to take it. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're yeah. right, you're right. Let's Sorry. not touch anything. You're the pirate thing. No, yeah. I didn't you. So, I, you know, I make a note of all important NPCs and items. Should I write down shit key as a quest item? Or... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you need to, to, to write it. Keister okay. key. Keister key. Keister key. Keister key. There we go. <laughs> yep. All right. Keister key. <laughs> so then we'll, it, we'll return to the top with the captain. Yep. All right. You guys return. Um... Captain's still not on board. He's just stayed back. Uh, but Rain has got the crew tied up properly. Um, and and I've, yeah. I've got paper and pen, by the way. So just to dart. Sorry, to interrupt, but uh, I can present her with an actual list, which would probably be the, the way I do things normally. So yeah. yeah. So you, you bring out the list. She glances it over, uh, and you know starts to give orders. Um, looks like she's intent on taking off. Uh, not everything, but uh, she's like move out. You know how. Move out half the fish, leave them the water. I think we can take the supplies too, but leave them some rope and sail. And I think we'll even bring over one of our spare mizzen masts. We don't need to strand these gentlemen. That's very generous of you. Before we leave, Shimber. Ah. Check the captain to see if he has anything else hiding from us. <laughs> hey, captain. <laughs> What you hiding up there? Is, is, is Simber the person who does body cavity search now? <laughs> well, she, he'll be the one with... He's, he's, he's the only one without qualms to do so, I guess. Yeah, anyway, so. I uh, yell at the cabin. Hey, cabin, what else are you hiding? I've got, I've got nothing. I, I've given you everything. And we're How giving you something in return. Him? How's that for pirate trade? What was that, cabin? All I have is the clothes on my back. How nice are his clothes? Yeah. Scarlet? <laughs> uh, they're, they're not, they're, they're not uh, altogether too nice. They're worn and frayed. I mean, they're working clothes. Obviously, he was, you know, hard at work as well as the rest of his crew. Um, okay. And I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess now is an opportunity to to say, Dar, that a clothing style is a little different than your classic pirate movie, I was right? About yeah. That up. In fact, you're more of an expert on it than I. So why don't you describe it? I guess I would just basically say that at this point, um, this this far south, uh, the water, the it's colder than warmer. Let's just say, think think southern Atlantic coast. Actually, sorry, northern Atlantic coast because we're reversing it, right? But um, mm. so it can get rather cold uh, as we go. If we were to go another eighty miles south or so, you've got ice in the water actually, right? Uh, just a little bit. And as you get further and further south, you get closer to those Arctic, the Arctic equ equator. Uh, so you see a lot of uh, furry. Fur like hats with fur lining that flop down over the years, um, a lot of layering, right? Like up to six layers sometimes, so that you can just uh, cast it off as you as it gets warmer, and just most importantly, a lack of your standard European trappings that you see in movies, right? So tricorn hats nowhere to be seen. Uh, um, the 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 long embroidered coats are less likely to be seen. There's a lot more of head wraps if you want to protect the head, right? And then, uh, like those four, those four hats, and then also um, a lot of a lot of tanned leather coating versus versus cotton. Um, although cotton is common enough, it's uh, it's not it's uh, a vast majority of cotton hasn't made its way to the Cork Archipelago due to the current Cold War that is currently exploding into a real war between uh, Nadajar Way and the and the uh, Corkian um, Islands. So something so else of yeah. note is that this trader ship, the uh... The, the, the coloring is, is a little different as well. Um, and not just, so down, for, in the Cork Archipelago, people wear very bright, vivid, sometimes oh, yeah. even lurid, clashing colors. Yeah, yeah. They love bright colors. Here, the colors are much more muted, um, more tasteful if one were to be a, a designer. And um, That's debatable. And, but in particular, these ones are a little strange because some of the, some of the, uh, pants there's only one pant leg or uh or there's only one sleeve on the shirt or sometimes if there are pant legs they're colored two completely different colors all right is that is that cork or are you talking about fewages it's fewages yeah exactly because the fewages thank you uh it, it, they have a, a sign of 
they have a, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, perfection is based on asymmetry. So yeah, that's, yeah. So I shake my cutlass at the captain and say, Polly's not going to drink today. You got lucky. Polly's his Polly's his sword. Just so you know, he's well and uh, and truly uh, intimidated at the moment. So he's just sort of shrinking back from everything. Okay, so, Scarlet, let's go. Scarlet, so before gonna... we leave, should we should we disarm these folks or the cannonballs, perhaps? Uh, we're we're taking that. We're taking that. Where we may even take the cannons. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So just checking. They say they're fishermen, but they're armed. So yes, actually, that's a valid point. I did want to ask Captain. Uh, there's a little bit more to the story, isn't there? How, how did you come about this ship that's so well armed, as as fishermen? Well, it's not well armed. It's it's got a few guns to protect yourself from pirates, but ha <laughs> ha. And How'd that worked out. <laughs> and you can and it, see we're in no condition to fight. <laughs> it, this is a Felegi's ship, right? Yes. Okay, so and just it, it does have cannons, but it only has four cannons. Yeah, and just so you guys know, the idea of the idea of a non-military ship having cannons that's from the hegemony isn't isn't that abnormal, I guess. So, uh, if it were from Cork, uh, because the Corkians don't have access to this to this uh, firearm equipment unless stolen, that would be a much bigger story, you know. So, how many cannonballs you got, though? Yeah, I was gonna say. Speaking of stolen, yes. Um, I can help dismount and take these if we have the space and wait for them. Yeah, we, we, as far as I know, we still have room, and, well, we're going to be down a mizzen mast, and that gives us even more room. It's true. It's only fair in trade, even though the cannons are worth, just so you guys know, about 10 times as much as a mizzen mast, maybe like 20, but yeah. But the mizzen uh, mast is literally just like a tall tree that's been properly trimmed. Well, I know, but, <laughs> but, but spe you know, specialization, in, you know of all people, specialization in labor is worth a lot more than just the mizzen it mast is. itself. But yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But you guys are getting in, a, in return, you know, fish and cannons and cannonball and gunpowder. Yep. And, yep, yep. And as I, start, I start hauling some big balls. And I did ask earlier, yeah, and then uh, obviously uh, Hag is probably used to grabbing a bunch of cannonballs and bringing them over as necessary. But, yeah, yeah. And it's, so, it's, you know, all hands, this is all hands of things, and soon enough, the, re the rest of the crew uh, join you to start hauling off whatever you can. Um, it's pretty quick, you know, it takes a couple hours to finish hauling everything over, but the, the, the crew is well experienced and, and soon enough this little fishing vessel is, is well and truly plundered. Um, not that it'll make you guys rich, there's very little in the, in the way of valuables, but supplies are always welcome as are uh, weaponry. Thanks for the fish, so long. Soon enough you, uh, he leaves them all, uh, Reyna leaves them all tied up on board, but uh, she throws down a knife as she leaves, close to one of them. Okay. <laughs> Who's we gonna grab it first? Do we recruit? Or are we not that's, that's exactly what I was gonna ask is, you mentioned how maxed our crew is, are we doing, you know, usually when you do yeah. this, you offer people crew spots, but. She, yeah, she didn't seem to inclined to offer anyone there. So okay. Well. And no one stood out as valuable either, so there's that too, but yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I don't have the authority to ask, so. Cool. These ones okay. Soon enough, you guys are underway. Back sail to sailing. Sailing. Um, it, this is time for Jared to leave, so do we want to call it here? Oh, yeah. We... So, uh, it's a good time to, as much as anything else, right? A nice little relaxing intro session. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a short, but it's uh, a nice yeah, yeah. stopping point. So so let's do it. All right, three, two, one. <laughs> Amanda, Amanda, Amanda with wow. enthusiasm there. Yeah, exactly. All right, thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. And I imagine next time we'll get to stab some people so or shoot some people. So thank you. Here we go. Yes.